Hello, everyone. Welcome to session one of LTech 676. Hi there. My name is Dan Hoffman, and I'll be your instructor this semester. My background is in instructional design and media, and I've been involved in the field of education for many years. In fact, I've had the privilege of working with students at every level, from pre-K all the way to graduate school. In addition to teaching, my background includes research focusing on the design and development of digital learning environments. My work in this area has spanned across content areas, age groups, and formal and informal settings. Together, these experiences have given me some insight into the complex relationships between education and technology. So now that you know a little bit about me, let's get into the details of LTEC 676. So what's a course titled Social and Ethical Issues in Educational Technology all about? Well, at the highest level, it is a course about society, which we might define as a group of people who live in a defined geographic area and who interact and share a common culture. Of course, all societies, and our 21st century society is no exception, face various challenges and problems. These problems or issues are conditions or behaviors that have negative consequences for large numbers of people within the society. Examples of social issues include poverty, all kinds of inequities, criminality, or a lack of civic engagement. Fortunately, most societies don't just stand by and watch these problems fester. Instead, they create different initiatives and establish various institutions to try and mitigate the problems they're facing. The goal overall is to improve the society as a whole. Two major examples of such institutions include education and various technologies. Education, of course, is an institution we use to teach our children basic academic knowledge, skills, and cultural norms. Technology, on the other hand, is the application of science or knowledge to address specific problems. Technology ranges from something as simple as using a sharpened stone to cut something, to building a digital network to make it easy to share information and resources around the globe. Both of these forces, education and technology, influence and in turn are influenced by society and its problems. Stepping back, we might think about this diagram as a sort of system. And like any complex system, a change to one component can impact all of the other components in that system. Importantly, these impacts aren't always clear and or predictable and they aren't all good or all bad. And as we all know, reality is much more nuanced. In LTEC 676, it will be our job to reflect on this system and how specific educational technologies have affected and are affecting the social and ethical problems of our time. This brings us to a guiding question, which we'll reference throughout the semester. I like to call this question Kernahan's question, after the Princeton computer science professor Brian Kernahan. Kernahan is famous for the various books he's written, such as his 2008 book titled D is for Digital. The subtitle of that book is What a Well-Informed Person Should Know About Computers and Communications. In this book, Kernahan asks an important question of modern society. What should an educated person know about computers? He goes on to explain why this deceptively simple question is so important. He writes on page 5, Most people will not be directly involved in creating computer systems, but everyone is strongly affected by them, and some people will be required to make important decisions about them. Looking at this quote more carefully, I think there are three important points worth noting. First is the acknowledgement that only a few people are involved in creating technology systems. Second is the idea that nearly everyone in society is affected both directly and indirectly by these technological systems. And third, some people are required to make important decisions about these technological tools and how they're used. 
And of course, I see people seeking a degree in learning design and technology as being among the people who will likely be required to make important decisions about computers and technology in the context of education. When I first thought about Kernahan's question, it occurred to me that educators are people who make important decisions about computers and communication systems. And people who design and develop educational technologies also make important decisions about them. So what do these people need to know about computers? Well, our guiding question this semester in LTEC 676 will be an adaptation of Kernahan's question. Instead of asking what should an educated person know about computers, we can ask ourselves what should an educator know about computers? Or to take it one step further, we can ask what should an educator know about educational technology? This will be our guiding question this semester, and we'll soon see that answering this question will depend on our ability to analyze and evaluate technologies from social and ethical perspectives. Okay, so that's a 30,000 foot view of LTEC 676 content. Now, I'd like to take a few minutes to talk about the course structure. Obviously, this course is online and asynchronous. This means that everything will happen remotely and there's no real-time class for you to attend. For these reasons, we'll rely heavily on our learning management system, Canvas. When you first log into Canvas, there's some important information and links that I want you to be familiar with. In the overview module, you'll see three things, the course syllabus, the office hour sign-up sheet, and the link to my virtual office. If you click on the course syllabus, that will take you to a Google Doc that you can view. I encourage everyone to read through the syllabus carefully in the next week. The office hour sign-up sheet also takes you to a Google Doc, but this one you can actually edit. This is the place where you can sign up for office hours when and if you need them. As you can see, there are already time slots listed, and all you need to do is write in your name and let me know which course you want to talk about. And this brings us to the third link, which is the link to my virtual office in Zoom. Another important task for you to work on this week is updating your Canvas profile. Here's an example of a student from a previous class. You'll notice she has some important info in her profile. First, she has a picture, and she has her degree level, degree program, and cohort year listed. She's also included a little bit of additional information about her background, which helps all of us get to know her a bit better. So please take a few minutes to update your profile in this manner. If you're new to Canvas, don't worry. There are many YouTube videos explaining how to do things, and I've linked to one right here called Canvas, How to Edit Your Profile. So definitely check that out or sign up for office hours if you think you need help. Now, I want to talk a little bit about the weekly structure of this class. As I mentioned in writing, each week will begin on Tuesday morning and will end on Monday around 12 noon. So when the materials for a week are released, they'll look something like this. Now, this is just a sample, but let's go through this module section by section. The first section is the presentation section, and in most weeks you'll have a dedicated presentation file which you are responsible for viewing. In the next section, you'll see the readings for this session. Now pay attention as there may be more than one reading, and sometimes the readings will be marked optional, which means they're not required, but are highly recommended. And finally, there's the assignment section for each module. The assignment section will have a number of different tasks that you need to be working on. Pay attention because assignments in the same module will have different due dates, which you can see listed under each assignment's title. Note that there will be times when you have multiple assignments due in a given week. Now, I want to end by sharing a few tips for success in this online asynchronous class. First, please review the presentation files carefully. You're responsible for the information covered in these videos, so it's a good idea to watch them and take good notes. Secondly, it's important that you read the assigned readings. Also, take good notes on what you read, because these notes will help you when you work on your critical reflections. In those assignments, I'll be looking for evidence that you are able to connect the ideas in the readings to the ideas in the assignments. Another reason to take good notes is they will be helpful for the course's concept map assignments. 
three times this semester, you will be asked to document your understanding of the main ideas of the class in the form of an original hierarchical concept map. We'll talk more about this in a few weeks, but here's a few samples from previous students. And I'm mentioning this now as a way to encourage you to keep up with the readings and to take good notes from one week to the next. Finally, I want to encourage you to plan ahead in this class. Many of the weekly assignments will involve multiple steps across multiple sittings, so please don't save them to the last minute. Relatedly, it's critical that you monitor your own understanding. In a 600 level course like this, there's a lot of reading and the topics are pretty heady. So ask for help anytime you feel you don't understand a particular concept or assignment. I'm here to support you and you can sign up for office hours whenever you need or want them. It's my job to help you be successful. Okay, everyone, that's all for now. Welcome to LTech 676. Have a great week and I'll see you in Canvas.